Well, good afternoon. Oh, come on, folks. Good afternoon. This is a happy, happy occasion. To Mrs. Kennedy and the Kennedy family, to our distinguished guests, to my colleagues, and to those who have served and supported our nation's Department of Justice, it is my pleasure and it is my great honor to welcome you to the Robert F. Kennedy Department of Justice Building. Today, we come together to celebrate the achievements and the enduring contributions of our nation's 64th Attorney General, a man whose legacy continues to guide us, whose memory continues to touch us, and whose example continues to inspire us. As we reflect on his remarkable life, we also mourn the recent loss of another great champion for justice, Robert Kennedy's dear friend and brother-in-law, Sergeant Shriver. Sergeant Shriver served our country in many ways, as an advocate for equal rights and opportunity, as an ambassador for this nation, and as an innovator in promoting global understanding and healing. Throughout his life, he worked to live up to his brother-in-law's charge to all of us, to rely on the power of deeds, not talk, to make a difference. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Shriver and Kennedy families, just as they are also with the family of Robert Kennedy's longtime and trusted assistant, Angie Novello. On Tuesday of this week, we lost both of these public servants, but this afternoon, their presence is felt. As one member of the Kennedy family put it best, Sarge is smiling down on us today. I believe he is, for this is indeed a very special occasion. For me, it is a tremendous privilege to be joined by so many former department leaders who have made this a truly historic reunion. With us, we have former attorneys general and a cadre of assistant attorneys general, first assistants, administrative aides, line attorneys, and support staff who worked alongside Attorney General Kennedy in the Criminal Division, the Lands Division, the Antitrust Division, the Tax Division, the Civil Rights Division, and the Attorney General's Office, among other components. Now, I'm going to ask that if you were part of the Justice Department from 1961 to 1964, please stand so that we may recognize you. I want to thank you all for being here and for helping us pay tribute to one of America's most committed public servants and one of this department's most effective leaders. Now, there is much to admire about Robert Kennedy, and there is much to learn from his tenure as Attorney General. Even now, exactly 50 years after Robert Kennedy stood with his older brother in the East Room of the White House and swore the oath of his new office. Now, like many of you, I can still remember those days. I can still remember sitting in the basement of my childhood home in Queens watching, on our black and white television, the inauguration of a young, charismatic new president. That was January the 20th, 1961, half a century ago. I was in the fifth grade, and I can still recall my mother's enthusiasm, my father's pride, and my own sense that something, something exciting, something important was happening. The following day was marked by another historic moment when Attorney General Robert Kennedy was sworn in and, as I was told, after Justice Department guards initially turned him away for lack of an ID card, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure if they continued to work here after that, <laughs> he was finally shown to his office on the fifth floor of this building. That was January the 21st, 1961. Now, my understanding of the obligations of an Attorney General as a visionary as a force for progress, and as a model for leadership had not yet taken form, but it would soon enough. Because just two years later, there was much talk about Attorney General Kennedy and the successful effort that he led to integrate the University of Alabama. This was an act of courage. This was an act that had negative political consequences. This was a defining act. It was not the easy or necessary thing to do. It was the right thing to do. 
On June the 11th, 1963, my family watched and celebrated news reports that two brave young students had, with the help of this department, stepped past Governor George Wallace to become the first African Americans to enroll in the University of Alabama. Now, years later, one of those students, a wonderful woman named Vivian Malone Jones, would become my sister-in-law. I'd like to ask Vivian's family, my family, to stand. Now, long before I married her lovely sister, that would be Sharon in the front here, <laughs> Vivian became the University of Alabama's first African-American graduate. Shortly after earning her degree, she moved to Washington and began her career right here in the Justice Department Civil Rights Division. Now, Vivian passed away several years ago, much too soon. But throughout her life, she was inspired by and grateful for the courage that was shown by this department under Attorney General Kennedy's leadership. The results of that famous stand in the schoolhouse door, the progress that it marked, the commitment that it signaled, and the justice that it ensured served as my first lesson from Attorney General Kennedy, even if it would not take many years before I could fully understand it. I learned that the law is not an abstraction. It is a powerful tool that can either put up walls or build bridges. It is a strong, deft instrument that affects the lives and circumstances of real people and real communities for good or for ill. It is an effective means to transform our society into one that serves the interests of the many or the few. Now, no one can doubt, no one can doubt how Robert Francis Kennedy chose to use the law when he was Attorney General. He taught us that Law can be a powerful force for good if we are willing, as he was, to roll up our sleeves, to summon our courage and our best efforts, and to lead from the front lines of change. In doing just that, Attorney General Kennedy championed the cause of the least among us and made our nation more just, more fair, and more humane. He was not afraid to dream a better world and to act to create it. Now, the lessons of his life inspired my own decision after finishing law school to come to work in the Justice Department's criminal division, just as Robert Kennedy did shortly after he graduated from law school. I arrived here in 1976, a dozen years after Attorney General Kennedy had left the department. Yet his presence was still felt, and memories of him were still often shared. I was told stories of how he'd walk the hallways of his building, ducking into the offices, startling and amazing department employees. I heard that those who visited the fifth floor were likely to see his dog or young Kennedy children running by. From that very chair, which sat at his desk throughout his time here, Attorney General Kennedy called on his team to reinvigorate the department's mission and to approach the great challenges of the day not as problems to be contained or kicked down the road, but as crises to be solved. As a young line attorney, I never imagined that I would have the opportunity and the honor of assuming the position that Robert Kennedy once held. And I know that I would not have had this extraordinary opportunity to serve were it not for the commitment and the courage of Robert Kennedy. He and leaders like him made it possible for someone like me an African-American kid from Queens, to stand before you today as our nation's 82nd Attorney General. I know from the core of my being that with this honor comes an obligation, a duty to extend and to strengthen the work that Robert Kennedy began here, and to conduct myself in a manner that is consistent with his vision of who an Attorney General is and how one should use the powers of that office. In his first speech as Attorney General, Robert Kennedy argued that the time for apathy had long since passed, that it was time to, and I quote, prove to the world that we really mean it when we say that all men are created free and equal before the law. All of us, he said, might wish at times that we lived in a more tranquil world, 
but we don't. And if our times are difficult and perplexing, so are they challenging and filled with opportunity." Unquote. Now, despite all that's been accomplished in recent decades, we still do not live in tranquil times. We continue to face difficulty, injustice, division, and an array of challenges that can serve to sharpen our skills, steal our resolve, focus our energy, and impel us to action. In times like these, the importance of Robert Kennedy's work becomes even clearer. And I am proud to report that in today's Department of Justice, this work goes on in our offices, before our courts, and out in our communities. It goes on in our demands to those in power and in our aspirations for those in need. It goes on in our efforts to protect our national security, to safeguard our civil liberties, to expand opportunities, to prevent and to reduce violence, to combat the causes and consequences of hate, to uphold the Constitution, to strengthen the rule of law and the values that define this great nation, to protect the most vulnerable among us, and to honor the principles that were at the root of Attorney General Kennedy's actions and the heart of his decisions, integrity, inclusion, tolerance, and above all, justice. So as we celebrate Robert Kennedy's life and his impact on this department, let us also commit ourselves to carrying on and to carrying out his mission to make gentle the life of this world and to make good on the promise of our nation. Let us answer his call to face up to our nation's problems and live up to its founding principles. And let us heed the wisdom of his extraordinary example. Now this afternoon from our video tribute from our panelist discussion and from the words and memories that his beloved daughter Kathleen is here to share. We have the chance to see a fuller picture of Robert Kennedy and to expand our understanding of this man and his vision, as well as our ability to emulate his actions. Half a century ago, Robert Kennedy proved that a single person has the power to improve the world around us. Today, 50 years later, his example remains emblazoned on the hearts and souls of the American people, and his voice echoes through the generations calling on us to shoulder our responsibility to serve, to serve, and to serve. This lesson and this message still points us down the path that Robert Kennedy never finished traveling. So let us keep going. Let us continue his fight for a world free from injustice. Let us move forward despite the obstacles before us and the cynics around us toward progress. Let us act with optimism, without delay, and with adherence to the highest standards of professionalism, the very standards that Attorney General Kennedy established. And let us signal to all the world that in America today, the spirit of Robert Kennedy lives on, in his family, in his former colleagues, in his, this Department of Justice, and above all, in the citizens of this great nation. Thank you.